I'm Stephen Foskett from Gestalt IT, and we are here at AWS uh, reInvent 2018 in fabulous Las Vegas. As we did at VMworld, I'm catching up with my friends from Pure Storage, and uh, they have a big announcement this week, so let's learn all about it. My name is Cody Hosterman, and I'm the technical director at Pure Storage for VMware Solutions. I'm here to talk to you about Cloud Block Store. Yay, cloud! <laughs> and that's actually, the, that's actually the big news, and this is a major move for Pure Storage, because you are, um, you know, I mean, pe people think Pure, they think hardware. Yep. And I'm Pure has a, a lot of tech, a lot of skill, a lot of know-how about making good things that store data. Yep. But what we're talking about is software. Yep. Absolutely, okay. Yeah, we, we've seen a big move, right, you know, the past couple years around, hey, 10% of customers, yeah, they're going fully public. You know, 10% are staying entirely on premises, but the vast majority want some kind of hybrid solution, right? And a very, very popular choice is, of course, AWS. Yeah, well, it's obvious from this show. I mean, there are over 50,000 people here. I mean, the, the amount of money and the amount of companies that are running in AWS now is just massive. And like you're saying, um, it's just not realistic to think that a company is not running at least some things in AWS. And of course, they want their data there too, because uh, I mean, heck, Amazon just announced a bunch of you know, really cool uh, capabilities around machine learning and things like that. You want to be able to get some of your data into, into AWS. Exactly, I mean, we, we, customers want to be able to run their workloads where they need to run it, whether that's on-premises, whether that's inside of AWS, and so we want to enable our customers to be able to do that, right? Whether it's running directly on us or moving it somewhere else, right? We want to enable that functionality. And of course, um, you know, pure storage isn't just about flash. You know, you've got a bunch of uh, data services built into the platform as well, and you can use all those data services in the cloud too, right? Yeah, that's the whole point, right, is that you now have those features that you used on-premises, replication, snapshotting, right, QoS, that you, that you can em employ inside of four EC2 instances, inside of AWS, or what have you. Cool. Right. And, so, and enabling that simplicity too is, is a key part of that, right? It's simple to set up, simple to use, same APIs across the board on-premises and in public, and also we can offer the uh, higher availability around our replication between different availability zones around your storage. Cool, so you want to tow it to me? Yeah, yeah, let's take a look at it. All right. So what we're going to be demonstrating here is uh, the deployment of Cloud Block Store. Right? Cloud Block Store is a cloud formations template that you can deploy in a variety of ways. And what we'll be using here is we're good friends with VMware, and so we're using their, one of their tools to be able to deploy it. But you can really deploy it in any way you want. So let's take a look. So we're logging into vRealize Automation. This is VMware's self-service portal. allow you to provision VMs, networks, all kinds of different resources. And so one of those things is, of course, Cloud Block Store. And so inside our storage as a service, um, we have the ability to deploy Cloud Block Store from a vRealize Automation workflow. And underneath this is actually using vRealize Orchestrator to kick off the CloudFormations template. Right? CloudFormations is an AWS service that allows you to deploy essentially virtual applications from a template. And that's how we've designed Cloud Block Store. So it makes it really easy to quickly deploy. And inside of this uh, self-service uh, workflow, I can specify where I want it to go. What region, what AZ, what VPC, right? Uh, subnet security group. And the nice thing about VRA is that the administrator can control exactly what options the end user has to provision this. Uh, you can narrow this down, you can hard code, you can make it dynamic, right? This particular workflow says when I choose my VMs VPC, it narrows down the other options, security groups, and subnets that are only valid for that particular VPC. I give it some basic name, which will be the information uh, around my Cloud Block Store instance, name, DNS, that type of stuff, and it goes and deploys. Right, fairly simple to run this through. And like I said, vRealize Automation is just one of the very many ways of doing this. AWS is very developer friendly, right? And so they have a ton of different APIs that you can use, whether that's Python, whether that's PowerShell, right? Whatever you prefer, whatever your organization likes to use, you, you can do that too, right? And so that's why we've made it a CloudFormations template, so it's easily done regardless of your infrastructure, what you have on premises or what you have inside of AWS. And so this workflow is moving forward, and it's reaching out to AWS to deploy this CloudFormations template in that particular VPC. And now I sped this up a little bit, it is a video, but it takes about four minutes right now to deploy the entire thing. So you can have a fully running cloud block store running inside of AWS in just a couple of minutes. And this is really attractive for also development, right? Uh, hey, I just want to go in there, I want to run some tests, I want to mess around with the API, and then spin it back down. Or you can run it permanently using our active active replication, using our async replication for your workloads, right? There's a lot of flexibility about how this can be deployed. And I can then, since this is really just 
our purity operating environment, I can manage it just like your on-premises flash array. Create volumes, resize them, add snapshots, right? all the same APIs, it looks the same from the end user. So you have the same look and feel, whether you're using a flash array on-premises or you're using cloud block store inside of AWS. And so we're creating some volumes and ready to provision that storage to an EC2 instance. Very simple, very quick. And how much was this sped up? Sped up, um, it, it took about four minutes to deploy overall, so I sped it up by, you know, I removed about three and a half minutes out. Okay, so it's not like an hour. It's, it's, it's not it's an a hour. Couple minutes it's a couple minutes for the purposes of the video. Okay. And, and so we're working on even improving that, right? We've seen some places where we can make it more efficient and faster, and so I expect that to only get faster. And, and so this is not a physical pure storage array. I just want to reiterate that. This is a, this is a uh, virtual array running in Amazon on Amazon hardware. Exactly. This is running inside of an EC2 instance. And one of the really cool things about this is that AWS is constantly introducing new storage technologies, right? Enhancing S3, enhancing EBS, and a variety of other options. And what we do is we take those new features, we learn them, we understand how they work, how to optimize them, and we do the work behind our EC2 instance cloud block store to figure that out. And all you're doing is, hey, I need 10 terabytes. We do the efficiencies and the optimization on the back end. Yeah, so it's not like just uh, you know, like a virtual machine you know, that's running on like bone stock uh, EC2 instance. It's actually a, a, a tuned and customized uh, instance made to run a pure storage. Exactly, we're, we're investing the resource and the engineering work to make it better on the back end consistently and constantly, right? And so you just do the same thing you always do, create a volume and so forth, and we do the back end work for you. And now we're presenting this to a, uh, an EC2 instance and exactly. we can do whatever we want with that storage. Exactly, it looks like a, a on-premises flash array volume, but it's just really running in cloud block store, right? And you can use this as a target for replication, right? So you can move data into the cloud and then you can you do op uh, operations on it in EC2. Absolutely, if you happen to have an on-premises flash array, you can replicate from that into cloud block store, move your workloads, right? If you have VVols running on-premises too, you can have even more granularity around that replication, but it can be anything, it doesn't even have to be VMware. And you don't have to have an on-premises flash rate. You can just have cloud block store running in AWS as well, right? So the options are yours. So what's the benefit to somebody to use, uh, who doesn't have pure storage in their data center, to use this in EC2? Well, there's a variety of things, right? One thing is that we offer um, our active active replication active cluster, right? And so we can protect your volumes across different availability zones, right? Giving you additional resiliency to your applications and your storage. Our, our Features like snapshots, data reduction, dedupe, compression, allows a lot of efficiencies that you may not be able to get with native functionality that we can add on top of these AWS resources. Right, and of course, just the core simplicity of the flash array uh, is a major benefit. And then, of course, the other thing too is that we're talking about a real enterprise storage operating system here. So in terms of you know, reliability and availability, it's uh, it go, even, even taking away you know, replication across availability zones and everything, this is a highly reliable uh, data storage platform. Exactly, I mean essentially it's the same software that you're using on premises on, on your flash arrays, but it's running now inside of AWS. You get that same resiliency, that same code protection and engineering work wherever your data happens to be. That's great. I feel like this is the kind of thing that companies have to do increasingly, especially um, you know, companies that have been tied to the data center or that are born in the data center, they have to be in the cloud because uh, the clients, the customer's data is going to be in the cloud. And if you're not there and if you're not able to offer your solution uh, wherever the customer's data is, then they're going to find another solution for it. You know? exactly. And so it's great to see that Pure is here as well, uh, offering a, a solution for customers who have uh, at least some of their data residing in Amazon uh, AWS. Uh, what's next for Pure? What should we look out for in the future? Well, one of the, I mean, I, I run our VMware solution, so a big focus for me is, of course, doing more work, work around VMware, and there's huge interest around VMware Cloud. So that's one of the things that we'll be very closely working with VMware on seeing what we can do with Cloud Block Store and something like VMware Cloud on AWS. All right, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, that was a, a huge splash. Um, previously at VMworld, they were talking a lot about VMware Cloud and AWS, so it's going to be great to see Pure there, because of course, like you said, I mean, that's been one of the things that really helped Pure to, to grow over the years at Tech Field Day. We've watched Pure have uh, increasing uh, integration with uh, VMware and vSphere, and um, as companies look to AWS as another location to run VMware instances, it's going to be great that they can bring Pure along there as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Great, thank you very much. So again, I'm Stephen Foskett here. We're at uh, Amazon uh, AWS reInvent in Las Vegas 2018.
we're taking a look at some of the cool solutions here, including uh, our friends uh, from Pure Storage. As I mentioned, we've been talking to Pure Storage literally since the beginning of the company. If you go to techfieldday.com, type Pure Storage in the search box, you will see presentations going all the way back to the founders at the very beginning, and then you can see milestones along the way as Pure improves this product, as they launch new product uh, you know, lines, as they add you know, integration, as they enhance it with uh, you know, artificial intelligence, machine learning, optimization, all this kind of stuff. It's all there at techfieldday.com, so please take a look at that. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, just go to YouTube, uh, search for Gestalt IT, or go to gestaltit.com. Thanks for watching.